a six pound chicken, a pork loin roast, three great tasting salmon steaks, a tender leg of lamb, eight beef and chicken kebabs, and everybody's favorite, baby back ribs. It's all done with Showtime. It can do a 10 pound turkey, two three and a quarter pound chickens. To do a chicken, slide the spit rods through the chicken, put the gear wheel on, and put it in your Showtime. Then set it and forget it. In about one hour, the chicken is done. To do a rib roast, slide the spit rods through the meat, match up the gear wheel, and Showtime will do the rest. It really cuts the fat. With the included basket, you can do your chicken parts, a dozen lamb chops, and four juicy hamburgers. You also get the dual heating tray for all your vegetables, plus barbecue gloves, food ties, plus an instructional video. Now, you can have a 30-day risk-free trial for only $19.95. So call now, and don't forget, you have to love your Showtime, or you get your money back. How many of you guys remember that infomercial? Raise your hands. Let me see them. You're old. Just kidding. Me too. <laughs> So I want to go back to the year 1998. Woo! Yes. I was a junior in high school. <laughs> so around that time, we did not have 24-hour access to Netflix. We had no Netflix. So if you found yourself up late at night, you absolutely watched terrible infomercials. Am I right? Uh, and this was the biggest of the big at that time. It was the Ronco Showtime, and we just called it the Ronco, and it was the It product. So Ron Popeil, he's the creator of the Ronco, he mastered the art of the yell and sell approach with the catchphrase that you all know, set it and forget it. That's right. Public service announcement. You're going to hear that phrase a lot this morning, so just bear with me, okay? Okay, but we're not. You guys awake? Okay, two people. Got it. Okay. So in case you didn't figure out what this machine does, it's a cooker. And the whole premise is you put in your beef, your chicken, your steak, whatever. You figure out the correct time and the correct temperature, and then you walk away. And poof, dinner is done. They showed you how easy it was to cut the fat. In as little as four easy payments of $39.95 plus shipping and handling. So between when it came out in 1998 and mid-2001, so that very short time frame, there was more than 2.5 million units sold for a total of $400 million. And that's just in that short window, and we know that that thing is still out there. Matter of fact, I ran out of time this week, but I have a good friend sitting in the audience today that actually owns a Ronco and has served me food from said Ronco, <laughs> Thomas and Sheena. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, we in America, we literally ate this machine up. And we, as a society, we started looking at the concept of set it and forget it, and we tried to put this concept in other areas of our lives. So I did a deep dive on the internet, as one would do, and I found more than just recipes from this moniker. So there is a set it and forget it style of marketing. However, research has shown that the advertising that, that does the set it and forget it style, it actually hurts what you're trying to market. It's not helpful. There is set it and forget it financial trading. And there are pros and cons to that. I have to admit, though, I found these articles super boring and very confusing, and I quickly moved on. I just give you that little snippet. There's also a book by the same title, and it is a book for insomnia that I probably will read later. <laughs> My point being is that the concept is out there. It's this set it and forget it. And I'm here to tell you this morning that this is not 
as helpful as we want to believe. 1 Corinthians 10.23 says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Not everything is for us. This mentality is seeping into our relationships. So let's take marriage for example. When you're dating, you put on your smell goods, right? You've got your cologne, your perfume. You probably are going to wear a Sunday outfit because those aren't the outfits that you would wear during the week. Um, you probably will try to have somewhat of your table manners, you know, at, if, you're, if you're going on a hot dinner date. A couple weeks ago, Jonathan and I are out to eat, and we notice that there is this young couple on a first date. And I don't know if you've ever seen anybody on a first date, but it is totally obvious and totally awkward. <laughs> so my girlfriend over there, she was wearing some kind of crazy outfit that was not flattering, but she was, she was trying. But she was sitting there, and she had that really awkward, like, that really straight posture where you know they're uncomfortable. And I think that she was ready to, like, leap up if, if the date wasn't going well. Like, she wasn't relaxed or anything like that. And then... You know, we see the guy, and he's kind of whatever. You know, he's trying to play it cool. And she's like, nah, And, you know, doing the flirty girl things, and you actually pretend like you're interested in what they're saying, but sometimes you check out, and you're not really there. We notice this as we personally are eating all of our feelings and carbs, and I am wearing my swishy pants. I mean, we're asking, like... Like, we saw the waitress come by, and we're like, are they on a first date? And she's like, yeah, we're invested. And so we're like, Give, like tell them, send a water by us, you know? Like. <laughs> but let's be real. When you get married, those things change, right? They go away. I hope they don't, but they, but they do. I mean, we don't take the time to dress to impress because there I was sitting in my swishy pants. Um, I've heard the phrase that says, I said I love you on our wedding day, and if anything changes, I'll let you know. Really? Okay. It can feel like a transaction or like an okay roommate instead of a partnership. We start to take the other person for granted. It's that whole idea of I go to work, therefore you have to take care of the household stuff. And that's not at all what God intended for marriage. Here's one that I'm learning this last several months. We set it and forget it with our friendships. We never have hard conversations because we want to avoid our feelings. We pretend everything is fine. And I would place a safe bet and say that some of us will then go to other people and talk smack about the person we're actually in a dispute with because we don't want to have that hard conversation. We don't hold each other accountable. And I don't mean the nasty things that we say when people make us mad. I mean that there's a biblical way to call someone out. Matthew 18:15 says, "Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his faults between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church." But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Some of us skip steps one and two to get to the three. It's easier to tell on somebody than to tell them face to face, hey, you're going the wrong way, and I love you, and I'm here for you. I'll move on. New Year's, 
is tomorrow, and I will place a bet to say that there are going to be some resolutions that will begin. The biggest one of them all being the gym, right? Yep. <laughs> News alert. Going to the gym for one week will A, not give you muscles, and B, will not help you lose 20 pounds that you have graciously gathered over this year. Just saying. We want it, though. We want that set it and forget it fix at the gym. I know I do. Finances. Christmas is over. And so now you need to recover from what you spent. You set a budget, but somehow you forgot to actually keep it. Leave that there, too. And, and truly, the most important one that we set and forget is our faith. It's our walk with Jesus. In Matthew 25, uh, is Jesus talking about the parable of the five talents. And it's this big wig guy, and he has three workers. And he each gives them a certain amount of money. And the first guy, he gets five talents. And he comes back, and he doubles. And he says, here you go. And the master's like, man, that's awesome. Well done. And the second guy, he was given two. And he came back with four. He's like, yeah, man, that's awesome. And in verse, uh, I'm going to skip down to uh, verse 24. And he gave this one guy one talent. And he says, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But the Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to, the, to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. The third guy, he was so afraid to make a mistake. He was so afraid to take a risk. So afraid to walk in freedom. And yet, that's what Jesus is asking of us. To step out of the boat, to walk this adventure called life with him. You know, sometimes I think we're afraid to tell people about Jesus. Jesus. And I think part of it is because we don't want to be compared to those people that come to your house and they're super creepy and they give you weird vibes and they always catch you when you're in your bathrobe. Or at least that's what happens in my neighborhood. And I'm not knocking on those, those people. But there's something to be said about going on a cold call than actually having a conversation with your coworker who you know. You have been planted wherever you are in whatever line of work that you do to reach those people. Those are people I'm never going to have the opportunity to talk to. Matter of factly, unless I'm super intentional about loving on people that I meet in my daily interactions, my ability to speak to people who don't know about Jesus is a lot slimmer than your ability, your opportunity. That's where God's called you. And that is an incredible, incredible calling to love on people. I think sometimes we're afraid to spend time with Jesus because we don't think anything will actually change. And we've created this concept in our mind as, well, I can't see him. I can't hug him. 
I can't talk to him face to face and actually audibly hear his words. And this next one is a big one. We know spending time with him will change us. And because we're in our comfort zone, we don't want to change. Ephesians 4, verse 22 says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We keep putting on our set it and forget it outfit, and guys, it's starting to smell. When will we truly put on our new self that has been given to us by the creator of the universe? This parable is not about money, not at all. It's about what you do with what God's given you. Do you set it and forget it, or do you invest in your relationships? in your daily walk. And that's just it. It's a daily walk with God. Not a weekly walk or a Sunday walk. Every single day. So what happens to those things that we set and forget? So some of you parents may know this. So I'm going to give you a scenario. You need to fix dinner, and you say, okay, I'm going to set you up in this next room. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cook dinner. I'll be right back. And then you have some really quiet moments. Eerily quiet moments, I would say, to where you go and you check on your son or your daughter. And you discover, by a happy happenstance, they now have a Sharpie mustache. They have created a beautiful mural on your wall that you did not want. And I'm looking over to see if this person is in here, and they are not, thank the Lord. Or they have a drawing that they have labeled as a heartfish, and that's not what it looks like. Or... I'll be honest, uh, that one time that I decided I was going to cook, and if you've met me for about five minutes, you know that mm, cooking's not a thing, uh, I decided I'm going to cook a chuck roast. And I put it in my crock pot on high for eight hours. I will admit I might have forgotten it. Uh, all to find out that... The meat was the size of a hamburger, and I wasn't eating it. I don't want my friends to dry up like that terrible piece of meat, because I'd be lost. I want my husband to spend time with me, not because he feels obligated to, but because we're best friends. And he generally is the one person I love laughing with the most. And more importantly, I want to have a relationship with Jesus that I can truly enjoy for all eternity. I think nothing in your life worth having isn't work. It's a daily choice, a daily walk with Jesus. And saying yes to him can seem so easy it's like because we get worked up, and we're in this moment, right? And sometimes maybe it's, it's you, you, you know, you've experienced a, an incredible uh, Sunday message, or you've been at a night of worship, and you just felt the Holy Spirit, and you're like, yeah, God, I'm doing stuff for you. And you're pumped, right? And then the next day, you're walking, and you're like, yeah, I got this, Jesus will. 
and you step into what I would like to call a dog landmine. And suddenly you don't feel that way anymore. We're so easily thrown off by the mess of walking out our lives with Jesus. Because he doesn't promise that that life is going to be sugar cookies and rainbows. It's hard work. How many of you guys actually like going on walks? Okay, Um, all of you have been marked unsafe. (laughs) Uh, Because most of you also know that I hate nature because it's gross. Um, You know, uh, there's bugs, weather, trees, you know, things. Don't like it. Yeah. Uh, Man. But walking is a part of our journey. God's called us to walk out a very specific path that he has perfectly created for each and every one of us. And of course, those paths look drastically different. It's choosing your spouse every single day, even when they make you mad. It's walking the path less traveled. And you feel alone. But that's the road that God has for you. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This book is our guide to success. To have a successful relationship with Jesus because that's what this life is about and nothing more. If God gives you success in your personal life, in your uh, business life, man, I'm so happy for you. I'm stoked. But this is the only thing that matters. It's me and him. It's you and him. And unlike the Ronco, which only goes around and around and around, it gets you nowhere. But walking a path leads to a destination. If you set it and forget it, you're going to stay in the same place. You're going to deal with the same frustrations, the same complications, the same struggles, or just the boring comfort zone of not experiencing all that Jesus has for you. So a few years after Ronco, excuse me, was a hit, they came out with more attachments, more features. Um, The clip that I showed you was actually an older version of their first infomercial because Uh, They didn't have the vegetable warmer that also looked like radioactive green beans that I don't want to eat. But they added that on later. And Ron's favorite phrase was, wait, there's more. You guys remember that? I do. But here's, here's the funny thing about that. Ron was actually doing the exact opposite of set it and forget it. He was doing the hard work. He was paying his dues. He never gave up. I found out that he died in 2021. He was 86 years old. And he was working up until that very last minute. Because he wanted more. And that's exactly what Jesus is asking of us. He wants us to have more, more of him, more grace, more love, more mercy. And I hope and I pray this morning that you understand that he truly, truly loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you that will last for all eternity. Would you join with me as we close? Father God, I thank you. I thank you for what would seem like an easy way to live this life, to set it and forget it. 
but you've called us to do the work. You've called us for a greater purpose. So that all would come and none would perish. That they would know you. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And it is in your beautiful name we pray. Amen.